Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Deontay Wilder stops King Kong in New York. Luis Ortiz, 10th round. Stay tuned. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit that bell icon. Shout out to the super chats. I've been going live, and y'all been holding it down. The Venmo donations, the Patreon family, and the we still working, right? Great fight. Shout out to Al Heyman. Thank you, Al Heyman. Steven Espinosa, Showtime, CBS. Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. Now, I did a, a live stream immediately after the fight. Had a great time. A lot of good feedback. But this is more condensed version for you guys. Because some people, they may be at work or about to go to sleep. They don't have enough time to watch all of the live stream. Great fight. I think it was awesome for the heavyweight division. Has people talking. Both fighters were tested. There was adversity. I thought Luis Ortiz came out. Some people question his age. Guess what? He didn't fight like an old man. Very sharp. The Cuban amateur background and the level of composure, ridiculous. His ability to counter and his hand speed actually looked faster than what I remember in other fights. So to me, this was actually, even in a loss, probably his sharpest performance since Bryant Jennings. He looked real good out there. And he was willing to try different things. I love that about Luis Ortiz, is he was willing to try different things. I seen him bouncing on his toes in spots. He was coming forward. And one thing you gotta give him a lot of credit for, even under duress, even though Wilder has this power, he was still trying to land home run counters and trying to catch Wilder, right? I thought Ortiz was winning the first, probably four rounds. Four rounds or so and then he got clipped and hurt and dropped and made it a 10-8 round I think it was around five Luis Ortiz survived this was towards the end of the round he survived came back correct the next round and by the seventh round he actually had Wilder badly hurt it looked like Wilder was almost on his way out body language wasn't looking good the taller Wilder was looking kind of wilted and it didn't look like he had the energy to kind of keep himself up different things of that nature and Wilder showed and proved people wrong because he had mad heart right there. You know what I mean? He showed, and this is what I said on Twitter, just who wants it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want to retain Sophia, the WBC belt? And he showed just that in the seventh round. So that was one of probably his, his, his best moments. Not that he was hurt, but that he was hurt. And he dealt with the adversity like a true champion. Great stuff. And as a boxing fan, just watching it, if you were rooting for Wilder or you were pulling for him or you picked him on your fight prediction or you have a prediction league, that was an oh shit moment where you're like, not looking good for Deontay Wilder. Maybe he will lose this one. Because the other thing is Luis Ortiz started jumping on him, which is another reason you got to give Ortiz credit. He, he was trying to go for the kill and you got to give Wilder credit because the, he had to deal with the onslaught. Luis Ortiz, after he already hurt Wilder, I think with the right hook, he, he jumped on him and he was landing a couple of good punches after that point. So just intense stuff, kind of similar to Joshua Klitschko, except there was different styles. Man, fuck, fuck the fans, the drunk fans in the crowd that were booing in round three. I hate stuff like that because you're booing because the fight that particular second is not having this crazy explosive action. These guys respect each other. No matter the shit talk before and Wilder, oh, I'm going to knock him out in three and Ortiz saying he ain't fought no, whatever. They respected each other. It was very evident in them early rounds. So no one's trying to get knocked out. Um, Wilder was saying, this guy's a boogeyman and I got to put him away. And Luis Ortiz was like, I'm going to expose Wilder. I'm going to put him away. So the fight has to build up and the guys are filling each other out. It's not going to be sustained action. That's what happens when guys don't have skill. You know what I mean? When they're just fighting off fumes and heart and when and they don't really have skill but they have punching power or volume but these guys it was a high speed chess match so but by the the fourth fifth round or whatever it started to open up more action like i said luis got hurt first but then he, he bounced back strongly two rounds later he hurt his man had wilder on bad legs man it's just a great fight 
The fight came to an end in the 10th round. Wilder regrouped. He composed himself. And he, he just he clearly has power. Because he hit Luis Ortiz with something. And Luis Ortiz dropped. And he knew it. And he knew this was his opportunity. And I said this in the live stream that I did earlier today. If you got a guy like Luis Ortiz, you got to be careful. If you get him hurt, get him the fuck out of there as soon as you can. You know what I'm saying? If you could do it safely, you got to because he's that good. And he has power and he has heart and everything else that he shows. So if you don't get him out of there, then it's just bad. And Wilder knew he was probably down on the scorecards or possibly down on the scorecards. Even though he had a 10-8 round, some people might have had round seven for him for Luis Ortiz a 10-8 round because he was badly hurt. The only thing that happened is he didn't drop. That's the only real difference, but he was visibly shook or feel it, shook up or whatever. So anyway, Wilder being a good finisher, he, he just put it on Luis Ortiz. Had Luis Ortiz hurt, backpedaling, spilling over in the 10th round. He fell into the ropes, got hit with a nasty uppercut, and he was done. People saying premature stoppage, stop it. The ref was waving him off and he did never even looked up at the ref. You go watch the replay. You know what I mean? He never even looked up. He was done. He was exasperated. He gave everything he could. And he was in there with a monstrous puncher. Wilder made America proud. American champion. Luis Ortiz made Cuba proud by putting up a valiant, spirited effort. And it was just a great heavyweight fight. The type of fights that hopefully people watch. And even if they're not diehard boxing fans, they say, that's the type of fight I want to see again. Or what's next? I want to see Wilder versus Joshua. I heard he's good too. So... Again, shout out to Showtime. They're murdering HBO. I didn't really even hear people talking about Kovalev's fight. And it was in the same city on the same night. But I was really happy with the Showtime fight. I will watch HBO's fight because I have them both recorded. I'll probably watch Wilder Ortiz again. Sharp performance by Ortiz just wasn't enough. And again, that's, that's the power of youth, athleticism. Wilder did start opening up with his jab. And that power, I told you, he got that Wakanda vibranium power and when you got a guy with that type of power it's never over for him as long as he don't get knocked out himself he's a threat you know what i mean and and to me this was just a great this was this was almost better than deontay wilder blowing luis ortiz out if this looked like bermain stavern 2 and then ortiz just got knocked out in, in the first round knocked down three times then people would have easily said, oh, motherfucker, he's, he's 42 years old and he sucked anyway. He never really fought no one. He wasn't a champion. But Luis Ortiz showing what he brings to the table and troubling Wilder, this was the best potential outcome for Wilder because people had questions on his chin. Well, he never got knocked down. He survived that. Like I said, if he would have just blasted out Luis Ortiz, all the critics would have just said, oh, he was easy work. Oh, man, everyone, Joshua would have knocked him. You know what I mean? But the fact that that's more impressive that he did put up a fit. He didn't come to lay down. You know what I'm saying? This, my friends, is real boxing. And this also goes against what Abel Sanchez said. And I'm going to keep talking about it. You don't like it, don't watch my videos. Abel Sanchez said, black fighters fight in a style that is unpleasant, unpleasing to casuals or boxing fans. And this is why they don't make money. Well, Deontay Wilder deserves to make some money in this sport. He deserves a big fight with Joshua. And what Abel said was proven false just in this fight alone because the black fighter won impressively he won in a fashion that has people talking because of the action because of the knockout you know what i'm saying crazy stuff it was a great fight like i said i, I have nothing bad to say about luis ortiz if luis ortiz can mentally bounce back and he took punishment because he keep in mind as as great as his performance was and as much as he troubled wilder he did for the first time lose and he got knocked down three times by a vicious puncher so sometimes when guys take a sustained beating they may not be the same this and i'm telling you wilder's power i had questions about it when he was when he was fighting on hbo i seen him knock out this black dude and it was like dude fell in the ropes but i was like i never even to this day i've never seen that black dude again so I didn't know if Wilder's power is real. I'm telling you, his power has to be real. A motherfucker who's 214 pounds taking on someone who's 241 yesterday who looked extremely big in the rehydration process the next day, right? And then being able to knock him out in three times and not get knocked down yourself 
and hurt him that bad. Like his wild Wilder's power is, is unquestionable. You can't even doubt his power. And he was arguably losing the fight. You know what I'm saying? So Wilder, this was the the performance he needed. Um, showed some vulnerability to some, but he also showed that he's a, a bad dude and he's he's dangerous and he's deadly. But Luis Ortiz, I don't know if many guys would have beat him on this night. He came, he came, he came correct. So I don't know that many guys, Dillian White, Lucas Brown, uh, Dominique Brazil. I don't know who in the heavyweight division really would have beat this version of Luis Ortiz. But back to Luis Ortiz, if he's mentally strong enough, he can bounce back. But taking a beating type of against a big puncher, sometimes the guys aren't the same. Look at Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. versus Meldrick Taylor. He was never really the same after that late knockout, right? You look at even Bermay Severn. He was a champion, fought Wilder, never got knocked down. And then his very neck in the fight with Wilder, he never officially got knocked down. His next fight, he fought Derek Rossi and got knocked down, but won. And then he took time off and then he got knocked out in one round by Wilder. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to Luis Ortiz mentally and how he takes his first defeat to see how he bounced back. But the one that showed up, I don't see him losing to a lot of guys at the heavyweight division. It's just Wilder. He just has the right combination. Power, athleticism, height, speed. Great fight. Let me know your thoughts. Drop it in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe to the next video's egos. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.